we have on add to in the world today, especially the religious world, that we can take a portion of God's word and decide what we are interested in and reject that which we do not care for. And we can be lukewarm and that's all right, or we can be cold and that's fine. Or varying degrees in between. No. But as we look into the word of God, we are mindful and make aware of the fact that God is king. Thank yeah. God he is the first and the last Alpha and Omega. He's the great Amen. God is the only holy, the chief among us. And the things that we have spoken, we are obligated, Amen, to apply our hearts and our minds to all we can that we will accomplish those before we come or before we call for us. And we are not, as it were, uh, have the option of doing uh, to whatever degree that we want to do. But we are to come to a certain, uh, shall we say, uh, degree of progress in the eyes of the Lord that his blessings will be upon us. So we we read here in this fourth chapter concerning the attitude of people toward his word. And began to teach by the seaside that was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship, and he sat in the sea, they sat in the sea, and a whole multitude by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things in the parables, and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sword to soul, and it came to pass his soul. Amen. Some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on the stony ground where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns. Now, of course, he's talking about the word of God being preached. And he gave it in the form of a parable. And this is where the word was fallen. He said, some fell among thorns. Oh, I speak it. And it came to pass that so some fell by the wayside, and the fowl of the air came to devour it up. Some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had not uh, no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and as the thorns grew up, it choked it, and yielded, it yielded no fruit. And others fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, some sixty, and some a hundredfold. Thank God for the good ground that will produce concerning the word of God. And he said unto them, He that have ears to hear, let him hear. And when it was alone, they were about with him, but uh, the twelve asked of him the parable. And he said unto him, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without all, but unto them that are without, all things are done in parables. And see, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And know how then you know all parables? Mm -hmm. Know ye not this parable? And how then do ye know all parables? The sword is the word. The sword so is the word. And these are they that are by the word side, that when the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately, and take away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are, are they that were likewise that were sown on stony ground, but when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure before time. Afterward, when afflicted or persecution arise, amen, for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among the thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. And these are they that are sown on good ground, as hear the word, and receive, and bring forth fruit, some thirty, some sixty, some hundredfold. All right, as he was considering 
the conditions under which the word has fallen, uh, we must uh, consider the fact that when the word of God is preached, and those come and hear the word of God, it has different effects upon different people. Now some, he said, as a stony ground, well, they accept it as it seems, and the word spring up without they're going to do real well, but they, as soon as the sun come out, or a fiction come, they are, well, it says, they wither away. And they quit coming, and they don't show up. And then it says, because they have no depth, they didn't go on and get down in prayer, get down in the word of God, attend the services, ask questions, hunger and thirst after righteousness. No, they didn't do it. And so they fell away. Well, the Word of God is, they're just as responsible for the Word of God as if they had of held off. They're just as responsible for that which they heard. They cannot use excuse that, well, it's too hard. It's too difficult. I, I, I couldn't get any pleasure out of that. I, I didn't see where it was necessary. God still holds them responsible for all that they heard. For the fact that God can save you for a day would give us great indication that he could have kept us for another day. And yea, another week and a year. Thank God he's able to keep us forever if we trust and abide yet in his word. So we can bring forth the fruit unto God. Thank God in our testimony. We can bring forth fruit in God and working for God and spread the word out if we be good ground for God. But he says, give to you no know mistress of the kingdom. All right, he says, know you not the parable? And all parables, the sword, sword the word. These are the way sign that when the word is sword, but when they have heard it, Satan comes immediately. So thank God you, you hear the word of God and you'll give some consent to it and say that sounds real good, but before you can or maybe even submit to it, the devil come and tell you, you don't have to do it. It's too hard, it's too difficult. Yeah. It's not necessary. Mm -hmm. Uh, don't be uh, don't be foolish. Don't get all bound up and wound up in that kind of stuff. Don't get yourself uh, uh, in no fix right now. That's the devil coming talking. Amen. And he tell you that there's no profit in being saved. So when the word is preached and God touch your heart with it, the devil come immediately and take away the word that is sown in the hearts. And these are they likewise that are stone on stony ground. And when they have heard the word immediately, receive it with gladness. Oh, that sounds good. I want to be saved. I want a testimony like that and have no root in themselves. See, salvation is more, as I say, than bowing in an altar Amen. and repent. Amen. I mean, you got to rise up and walk in newness of life. you got to go out and read. you got to search the words. you got to get some depth in yourself. you have to get something to believe. The enemy's going to pull as soon as you get saved. He's going to be right there to take the word away from you. And thank God if you don't let it get planted deep, get some depth, then, of course, you'll be like the wayside of soil. They pour they do it for a while. But as soon as mom says, Well, you're foolish. As soon as brothers say, Well, I don't understand what kind of crazy stuff you got up involved in. They you just endure for a while, but you can't take it any longer. Afterward, with affliction or persecution, somebody begins to uh, question you or tease you or put a little pressure on you because you didn't get the root in yourself. Amen. You only endure for a while, but when a persecution arises, and for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And you wonder where they at, and they won't even speak to you sometimes. Right. They cross by on the other side of the street. I mean, they double around the corner to keep from even looking at the saints. Why? Because they got offended because someone brought some kind of reproach against them because they believe the word of God. And they are those which are sought among, sought among thorns, such as hear the word, and the care of this world. And you got saved, didn't you? I heard you guys say, when you come to the service, but I, I have a job. Well, I have some shopping to do. I have, my mom wants me to do this. I have to do this. I won't be able to make it tonight. I won't be able to make it tomorrow. Hey, that's the word soon on the Lord. They that rise up and cry out the world. And cry out, cry out the word. Praise God. And then you find that you have not had opportunity to get uh, situated and established in the word of God. Because the care of the world and the deceitfulness of riches. Some have one, a job and a half. Some have two jobs. Some have three jobs. They've been out there trying to make it and fill their pockets and don't have time to take care of the soul. Oh. And the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. See, God would have a world saved, the world would submit. Amen. Thank God, their soul that God speak to each save them, sure. and he'd save them for eternity if they would give themselves to the things of God. Amen. Amen. If they would not let the things of the world cry out their right. hope for tomorrow. But they are busy, busy, busy. Going shopping, buying, selling. Thank God, and finally, you know it, before you know it, God had caught them unaware. 
and unprepared to meet him. Such is his word. Amen. And the lust of other things under him choked the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Yeah, well, I'm still saved. I didn't hear you testify for the last month. Well, I'm still saved, but uh, where, how far are you in your Bible? How far have you read? Well, uh, did you get anything today? Well, I didn't get a chance to read this morning. I'm going to read tonight, if we get a time, if I get a chance. You never be the same as God. Amen. Amen. For the word tells us the law of Christ for the job. Since that time, the kingdom of heaven is preached and men press into it. Amen. You don't you have the determination to press in and get up with God. Amen. And when you get saved, or you start out with God, and you go out and backslide on God because of the fact that you never made proper preparation, then you have a reproach to Christ that you said it couldn't be done. And it's a discouragement to the others out there that might have been thinking about it. The fact that you came to the good enough because God didn't just pour all the glory in your soul, that he just didn't pour all the knowledge in your soul, and you didn't make an effort to get established in the word of God, besides you got offended, you went out, then you have brought a great approach. They got a wrong you your Savior. And you'll remember it when you come before the judgment bar of God that you didn't have the right attitude for the word. So if we go into Matthew, the fifth chapter, he said, it was given unto you to know, he was speaking to the saints, and those who were converted, that it was given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, have to do these things in prayerfulness. I might be informed that they were hearing, they would not hear. Here in the fifth chapter, again, is Christ speaking. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And if these words here are just as solid, more solid than any rock of Gibraltar, it is more solid than the earth itself. For he said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. So these are more than just little verses for the Sunday school children to learn, but these are the un uh, unfadable, thank God, the unmovable, immutable word of God, that if we can possess these attributes in our lives, that we're going to be blessed. Right. Amen. We're going to be blessed. Many, uh, blessed means to be made happy. Thank God, be yeah. made very happy. Amen. You're happy. You are, in a way, thinking you are endowed. Thank God, with uh, the good things of heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And we cannot overthrow these thoughts. That if we're going to be blessed of heaven, then we require that we shall be poor in spirit. Amen. Praise God, or humble, as it was say. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We cannot be proud. We cannot be overbearing. We cannot be self-righteous and still uh, be possessors of the heavenly kingdom. Amen. God will not permit it. Those who are going off when you be Christian without these attributes. These must be in our lives. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. What are you mourning about? That has a great deal to do with whether you're going to be blessed. Praise God. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. These words seem like maybe, well, these are primary things, and they are. Uh, well, these are just the basics. Yes, they are. But yet, they're more than that. And they are uh, principles that will hold throughout whatever experience we have. Amen. I mean, everyone has been saved two or 20 years. Thank God, I mean, whether we have a ministry or a laity, these are principles that are unshakable, that God requires these things of those that are saved. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. And that's the key to getting some depth in ourselves. The wind when the storm winds come and the persecutions come, that we'll be anchored and not be blown away. Not be uh, driven off by every wind of doctrine that comes sweeping past. But if we hunger and thirst after righteousness, he said they shall be filled. Amen. Amen. So if we're not filled to the degree where we're getting glory, praise God, and the enjoyment of our salvation is not God's fault. It's just that you're not hungry enough. Praise God, you're seeking after some things. Thank God that will fill us with that which is not the word of God. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Christ is setting up here, starting out the sermon to the people. Praise God, starting out. Praise God, he lay down these uh, rules that we'll find in this video, in the sixth, uh, thank God, in the seventh chapter. 
the basics of our salvation, that we don't have to be converted from our pride, converted from our unmercifulness, or converted from our depraved hearts, condition, amen, thus, or converted from our selfish desires and our uh, uplifted, uh, sometimes fierce dispositions. Thank God for our uh, rejoicing in iniquity. And God will have to be converted from that if we're going to be blessed. Now, we have a world today trying to be Christians. They cannot stand the heat of the word. Amen. They cannot stand. Amen. The weight of the word. Amen. As Christ was speaking, these are basic things that he required. They're minimal things that without which we cannot make it to heaven. But yet people have gone, as it were, and set aside certain portions of this that they might have their own will. But we uh, can put our Beatitudes down, as he was speaking, the blessed this is and we compare them the attitudes with our attitudes and see what we come up with. Are we safe? No. Are we the children of God? Amen. Do our attitudes match up to the attitudes? Praise God, are we to the place where that we are measured to the word of God? That we can say, Amen. Amen. Thank God to each one of these uh, pronouncements that Christ have made upon the children Amen. that they are blessed. Blessed are they which are persecuted. Oh, I'm telling you, now when the Lord, when the sun came up, Thank God, those were planted, uh, thank God, as it were, on shallow ground, not much earth. Oh, they were not able to take the persecution. They were not able to take, uh, uh, as it were, the weight and the trials and the temptations that came because of the word of God. They weren't able to take it. So what happened to the blessings? Gone. In other words, to say blessed are these if you have it is actually to say uh, on the negative side that we are not blessed if we don't have it. Amen. And to not be blessed in the eyes of God will come to the day when he will say, Depart from me, you curse. And to everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. Because why? We did not see fit to embrace the word of God and all of its beauty. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of people against you falsely. And God the one speaking to evil of you truly. Because that's a reproach to the church when we are wrong. And people in the world out there can catch hold of it. And find out that we are wrong and they use that as an excuse and a crutch. But they're not doing what they ought to do. But he said when they speak all evil against you falsely. For my sake rejoice. And be exceeding glad for great your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets that were before him. All right. He opened his mouth and taught him. Now Christ didn't spend his day out there idly. Amen. Amen. And those words are just as true and enforceable today upon the children of God as it was the day that he spoke. We are required to possess of these attributes that we might be blessed. If you want to run and not happy, are you humble as you ought to be? I'm not happy, but do you love the word as much as you ought to? Well, I, I just don't feel good about this. Why are you hungry and thirsting after righteousness? Amen. Are you putting the things of God above the individual things that you're seeking and running after that you don't have time to really get down into God like we all do? That we can rejoice and have a song in our heart and in our mind. Here in Psalm 119. See, all the attitudes were not given in the fifth chapter of Matthew. We have the attitudes got all through the Bible. Promises to his children, to those that love him. Psalm 119 said, Blessed are the undefiled in the way. Okay, let's skip over and just say, Blessed are the uh, are they that are in the way. We're in the way, all right, but are you undefiled? Amen. Amen. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Amen. Again, he has laid down, as it were, a condition of what our blessedness or our happiness is going to be. That we're walking in the law of the Lord. Where this requirement. And our attitude, thank God, will depend upon whether we receive the attitude. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies that seek him with the whole heart. Amen. Praise God. We cannot be saved as we had in Sunday school this morning. Amen. And need more than just bow down to a couple of these two boys up here. Amen. But he said we're going to have to keep his word with his whole heart. Seek him with our whole heart, not just our mind. Many have started out and that's why they didn't succeed because they didn't put their heart into it. 
I mean, if, we, if we're going to succeed almost in anything in this life, with the competition that we have on hand, we've got to put our heart into it. Amen. If anything is necessary to get our heart into, that is in our pursuit of God and of righteousness. They do no iniquity, they walk in His ways. Amen. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. We don't have to keep statutes. You want to be a Christian? Many have started out without putting their heart into it. Right. And therefore the enemy has been able to twist them and turn them different ways because he did not have the diligence and the direction to keep his statutes. Yeah. That we walk in the law of the Lord. Now let's turn up over to the first song. The thought this morning is to get our attitudes right. That is, that we observe to do that which Christ has spoken. Amen. That was the ministry to bring forth. Thank God. And give, uh, as a word of reference to the word of God, then we ought to do that if we want to be blessed. You may, it may not be hard to backslide when you shout and happy. Yeah. Thank yeah. God. He said, you want to be happy? Blessed are you if you keep his precepts. How do you want to backslide when you're happy? No. Thank God when you're satisfied, that's the, uh, your best advertisement uh, that we have a good product is that we are living it and keeping it. So a satisfied customer is the best advertisement. So when we're satisfied with Jesus, we might go back to and go to something else. Not go turn back. Yeah. Why? Because we have received the blessing of the Lord in our soul. You wonder why you can press on, even in the midst of uh, physical affliction. Well, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm happy. I have uh, received the attitude. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now this is a commandment just the same as the rest of them. It's a basic uh, uh, principle that we have to abide by that we cannot walk with the counsel of ungodly. Why? For the word of God said, the righteous scarce to be saved, where shall the sinner and the ungodly appear? If we walk in the counsel of the ungodly, we'll appear where the ungodly appear, and that is rejected. So we must be sure that we're dealing with spiritual people, those that have uh, accepted the word of God, that are meek, that are humble, that have received, praise God, the blessing of the Spirit, that they are our spiritual people. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Does it not, sir, can't afford to be scornful. Our attitudes are changed. We don't like that anymore. We're out, thank God, searching for holiness and righteousness and not scorn. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law that we meditate day and night. Amen. I'm telling you one thing right there. Satan's not going to overrun this one. Praise God. Why? In meditating in the Word of God. Whatever we do, we're acknowledging Him. Yes. Amen. Whatever we do, we want to know what effect it's going to have upon the church. What effect it's going to have on the congregation. We want to uh, know what effect it's going to have upon those that are watching our lives. Are they going to be directed? Praise God. To, that when they should give their heart to God, that they would live like we live. Are we going to be living careless until Wednesday night? And then carry us to a Sunday morning, and then carry us hang out till we get back to prayer meeting or whatever the next meeting is. No, sir, we're going to have to walk uprightly and direct our lives by the word of God. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. God said he'll kill us. Amen. His delight is in the law of the Lord. Amen. Let's go to church. Praise God. Let's sing. Anybody got a special? Thank God. Who wants to testify? Amen. His delight is in it because he's been uh, keeping his mind and his heart. Thank God. Stay upon God down through the week. That when it's time for service, he'd be like uh, David said, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Didn't have to struggle down there. My mind is given to it. Amen. I'm churching God all the way. I thank God for the opportunity to sit in the midst of the righteous. Amen. I'm happy with the Savior. That's no chore to me, to serve the Lord. Praise yes. God, he meditating his law day and night. Thank God he's got his song book, he's humming some. When he don't have his song book, he's singing anyhow. Praise God, he can hood it. Amen, he can quote the, uh, the scriptures. See, well, that would seem like a boring life. Yes, if you go to the to do it, be. But when it comes to part of you that, uh, when you open your mouth, praise God, I'll come praise him. Amen. Amen. Well, here comes my husband, praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank God for life. The, Amen. We can just uh, learn to speak the Canaan language there where it doesn't become a drudgery and we can it's, it's in the spirit is not going to bore those around us. They won't bore them. If anything is convict them, if they're not right with God. Just praise, praise, hallelujah. 
Now, of course, if we do it just out of the dry form, of course, it's going to be, you're going to be my weary since it's cold. But we want to stay in the spirit of what we're doing. But in his law that we meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Now, this is why the devil can't move, because he's got the word of God hid down in him. Praise yeah. God, and he's like a tree planted by the rivers yeah. of water. And bring it forth his fruit. Now, he spoke of the place in the soil of the parable where he well, got cried out for the things of life, and he brought forth no fruit. Brought no fruit to perfection. But this is a tree that because it meditates in the word of God day and night, that it bring forth fruit in season. Amen. So we know sometimes about what we're thinking and how we've been occupying ourselves before the mother bringing forth fruit or not. If we're not bringing forth fruit, well, it's because we are leaving off the things of God. We're not hungry and thirsting after the righteousness that we might be blessed. But we want to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Now that's even what a tree needs. When it gets the sunshine and water, it'll prosper. Amen. That's the thing it needs. All right, so we're planted by the water. And when the sun comes out, thank God, it doesn't keep it from bringing forth fruit. Because the sunlight, of course, is the gospel. And it was the type of truth. So the ungodly are not so. Mm -hmm. If forth fruit in season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so. Now he started talking about the blessings, and now he speaks of the ungodly. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Why? The ungodly are not so, but are like the chant which the wind driveth away. Have you ever been around the church of God and, and hung around for a while and seemed like you're talking, but after a while you left up off your duty before you knew it, the wind just drove you away and you wonder where is such and where is brother so and so? Where is sister so and so? The wind drove them away. The wind drove them away. We go back to the Ephesian letter, I believe, the fourth chapter, says something there about the, uh, the uh, ministry was given, the gifts were given, for the work of the ministry, for the education of the body. And so he says that we not be Children talk to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Yeah. Thank God, if we get down and hunger and thirst after righteousness, get the doctrine stored in our life, great God, and walk in the path that is of His righteousness, then those winds of change and adversity will not drive us away from God, nor from away God from God's people. But the ungodly not so they're like the chance and winds of drive away. Yeah. Therefore, the ungodly cannot stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For well, the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So we want to be blessed. Thank God for blessing to his promises. Well, what is the word? He said in his word of law that we meditate day and night. Blessed is the man. Happy is the man. What it means more than happy? But it's meaning that the, the glory of God, God is smiling upon that individual. Amen. And therefore, Nothing wrong, nothing can happen to us of a, a lasting nature that is wrong as long as God's approval is upon us. Amen. And when Christ speaks, he said, Blessed is the man, he shall be blessed from heaven. Not just happy because we have people that are happy out of temporary situations. And happy here you can find a final bill be happy. That makes some people happy. But that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about blessed. Amen. He's talking about blessed from heaven. Praise God. That's what we really want to be. We want the sunshine in our soul even when it's raining. Yeah. Thank God he yeah. must be happy in God because we are loving his word. Yeah. Our attitude toward God determines upon whether we're blessed or not. Our attitude toward his word. You say, well, I don't see why you all so happy. I tried that once and I wasn't so happy. How much did you try? Wow. Thank God, and what did you give? Yeah. What did you submit to God? Amen. Yeah. How much of your life did you turn over to it? Wow. Or how much did you reserve for yourself? How many services did you skip? I mean, how many times did you forget to read your scripture? Well, I mean, how many times did the Lord tell you to testify and you didn't do it? Well, well that's your condition. Yeah. He said, Blessed is the man that hunger and thirst after righteousness, he shall be filled. Yeah. Thank God in his law that they meditate day and night. Amen. Did you ever get a scripture on your mind and turn the light on and look it up? Well, Amen. Did you ever get it like that and you turn the light on and look it up? He said, No, I'll do it in the morning. Well, Amen. Well, sometimes, Lord, you get up and read now. i got something I want you to read. Turn to the first song and read that over there before you go to sleep. Blessed is the man that walks down the council of the ungodly. That might be right on time. Just keep you out of trouble. Amen. You may have been getting some counsel. You shouldn't be talking to you. Amen. Praise God. He opened his mouth and taught them. Thank God he said, my kingdom is not this world. 
And Matthew 18, 36, my kingdom God is world. And so we have to walk in the council, thank God Christ. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom was of this world, then would my servant fight that my kingdom is not of this world. And as a result of that, John told us, love not the world. So we're not loving the kingdom if we love the world. Amen. Because Christ said, my kingdom is not of this world. So we don't have time to wait on God. Then we're serving the natural world. We're serving this world right here. If we don't care if we're a half hour late so we can run over to the mall or run over to the shopping center and right. take care of some shopping so we'll have more time than we would want to do tomorrow and it won't matter if we're half hour late because they'll be glad to see me if I come in 45 minutes late. Right. <laughs> right. That may be true, but how happy are you going to be with your friends when you put other things before God? Right. Hey God, when you're not rejoicing by the fact that the saints are assembling, I want to be there. Blessed is the man. Thank God they walk in the law of war. Blessed are the end of file in the way. Yes. Thank God. We're going to have to seek the Lord and give a little more diligence to it. Praise God that we won't be driven away. Thank God because of our attitude. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Let's sing the same chapter with John, our first John. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Yes. Amen. The word is blessed. You may make a hope to the world and hope to God at the same time. No, sir, you already made that condition. But the love of this world, that's like the seed falling on thorns. And your heart in a funny condition this morning where you'd rather have the things of the world or you're going to spit the God 50 50. Half the God and half the world. Part time church and part time in the world. I was going to talk and be really happy with our strength. If you look around the street again, you find it half the time. Why? Because you really have no depth in yourself. Man. The first time something difficult comes against you, you'll be gone. You'll be driven off because you can't stand. Man. You don't like that tree planted by the water. Trees of righteousness is by the say the planting of the Lord. He's speaking of blessings this morning. He had attitudes as opposed, thank God, to your uh, compared, rather, the attitudes compared to your attitudes to see if you love the world or are you not meditating in this law day and night. Are you like the seed planted by the works of wayside? Or are you like the seed, thank God, that fall on good ground? Are you ready for fruit or are you doing the best you can to show up? And wait for the time. Well, I don't the basic things and I realize I need the fundamental. But to go on to greater things for God, we have to master, thank God, or make some progress in the, uh, the fundamental thing. And that is to get our attitude right toward the Word of God. Thank God for our salvation. Amen. Thank God for our fellow saints. Praise Amen. God for the meeting. Praise God for our labor, toward our truth that we're bringing forth. We have to get the basic things straight now. Some have gone off and left off the basic things of love of God, love of His Word, in our attitudes toward the Word and His commandment. And some are even standing in pulpits today that have not given proper diligence to the uh, bringing these things into our life, and therefore the people that set up their ministry are dry. Man, indeed. Man. So we're going to have to have a proper love. As Christ opened his mouth, he didn't open it in vain. Man. He didn't open it just to be mocked. He didn't open it just to entertain the people or to occupy their time and hold them in uh, the meeting for a long time. No, he was telling them those things that were essential to their salvation and not only just to their initial salvation, but to their prosperity that they'd be able to bring forth fruit in their seed. That they'd be able to be of help and administer something to someone through your life. My kingdom is not of this world. Said, Oh, tell us when the kingdom will come. He says, it's not this world. He just trying to say, lo here, lo there, for the kingdom is within you. So therefore, that which come out of us, let us know, thank God, what is in you, and how the kingdom is within you. Love not the world, neither things are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him, and that's the thorny ground. Thank God, that's the ground where not much uh, didn't have any depth. That's the ground, thank God, where the word of God fell and did not prosper. Man. They take 50 people and they all sit in the word of God and some began to rejoicing and testifying and tears run down their eyes and began to just be happy in the Lord. 
And you got to come sit down there and can't wait for the service bell. Yeah. Then you got the kids stay in the seat when the prayer time for prayer. They got to go to the restroom. Got to go outside and move around a little while. Come back down and say they pray from God. Well. And all of a sudden, it's the same word. Thank God it's having a different effect on different people. Some people are bored and weary. And some people are rejoicing to stay all day long. Thank God. That's how the word is for me. They depend on their heart condition as to what effect the word has. And then some people come back to service and they hold service too long. And some people can't wait to get back. And they're back 15 minutes early and wait for the service to start. Sometimes they start a song early because they get more out of it than other folks do. They depend on their heart condition. Amen. So uh, one of the, the prophet said, us, uh, dig up the ground of a fellow heart. Praise God. Dig it up so the seed can get down in it. And don't be hard to use the word of God. Then when the word comes touching, bounce and fall on the floor, before you know it, you've gone back out in the world looking for fed in the golden alleys. Thank God because you can't find it in the church. Among God's people. Began back to love the world. Amen. You can't give God half of a life and half of the world. Amen. Amen. We're going to have to be uh, in this thing. Praise God. You're sweeping the floor saying. <laughs> Amen. You can't preach sweep and then enjoy it anyhow. I'm going to have to be part of the body. Praise the Lord. It's good to love the people of God. It's good to love the church of God. Amen. You know, we have had a right attitude toward God. Where we're not murmuring and complaining. Thank God. Where we're not hanging in the heaviness. Where the clouds don't come when we come. Amen. And we can't see anything right when we find everything went wrong. I know. Lord help us as the Amen. old mouth has taught them. Uh, help us to receive the word. Amen. Even on good ground. Bless the Lord and file in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord those, those people who are the God is the Lord. Love not the world. These are the things that he spoke for our happiness. And the best way to stay saved is to stay happy. Amen. Amen. When people get unhappy in all faith and call themselves Christians, they won't be around long. Why? Because there's going to come a time when God's going to try their faith. There's going to come a time when there's going to come a temptation and trial upon them. Right. And because they don't have any depth, they're going to be driven off right. of that profession which they had even taken. So the whole thing is going to hinge on how we respond to the Word of God. It's good to have, if we're not having the proper victory that we want, and the action we want, make a, a visit to the altar. It's not always more than this board, as we heard this morning. The altar is where you meet with God. It's on a symbolic place of where they made a sacrifice. And something's in the way, and you need to burn. Amen. 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 So we need to get out of the way if we're not having joy with the Lord, because He already told us, Blessed are they. Blessed is the man. Amen. Thank God, blessed, blessed. God is speaking of blessing. You've got to be blessed when you do what God says. There's no way you can get around it. If you're not blessed, then blessed always brings a smile. Amen. Every many times they went on, I got a blessing for you. The first thing you get the water ready, then it was a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. When God said I got a blessing for you, get your heart ready. Get some ready. Thank God for our heart on the issues of life. Thank God we're going to stay safe on our condition. Okay. And poor folks got good victory. Praise God, that poor folks don't have much money, but they got some good victory. Amen. Praise God, they got an outshot, maybe those that got maybe a couple of fifties in their wallet. Well, but they got the, the Word of God down in there. Amen. Amen. Down there, the promises of God. Amen to them. Or yeah, and amen. And they're teaching. Thank God for no folks are starving. Well, they got sitting under the same word. I didn't hear nothing this morning. That was a draft message this morning. I really didn't get nothing out of it. The other one said, praise God, I got some last to the next. <laughs> amen. Some fell on the blue ground. So he says, love not the world. Amen. Amen. For all in the world is the lust of the flesh, amen, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Amen. But they're not of the Father, but they are of the world. If the righteous there to be saved, where shall the sinner and the ungodly be? Be found. Now, I mean, the Hebrew letter quotes that they confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims. In other words, they have to turn loose of the world that they might get a hold of God. Well, when he said, lay him hold on eternal life, I did find find faith, Paul said, lay hold on eternal life. When you lay hold on something, it doesn't mean you just kind of lean on it. It doesn't mean you just take two fingers. You ever when you, you ever watch it go out to the fair and you ever see them uh, try to catch that pig or one of them lambs out there? They had to lay hold on it if they're going to catch it. I'm going to tell you, you can't put one hand on a pig and try to catch it. 
If you want it, you're going to have to get both hands on it and hold on to it. And you're going to let him, not just grab him, but you're going to have to lay hold on it. He said, he said, lay hold on the eternal life. He meant that you diligently, thank God with some effort, get both hands on it and grab it and hold on to it and go up will escape. Amen. Amen. So to do that, we've got to turn loose the world and get both hands, praise God for what we're after. Amen. Amen. Before we can really hold on to it. Why? Because the end of our soul, it told you that Satan, thank God, will reach in as it were and steal word right out of your heart. And take it away. Why? Because you did not find it there. You did not let it get some depth come in you. You did hunger and thirst at the right time. We want to be blessed. Amen. The difference between uh, those that uh, profess and serve God can't make the, fruit, what the fruits of it depend upon their attitude toward the word. Amen. You understand that those out there in the world that are living in sin every day and call themselves Christians and carrying the Bible around, they have access to the word of God and to happiness and a sin free life just as much as anyone else. Yeah. But because their attitudes uh, toward the word of God, they don't have anything down in their soul and nobody's looking at what they have. So they got to bring in the basketball teams, they got to bring in the bowling team, they got to bring in uh, the dancers, and all sort of foolishness and entertainment to keep the people there. But if they had the real word of God, if they didn't have nothing but a tent, praise God, they'd be rejoicing, and you wouldn't have to uh, entertain the people to keep them coming to service, because the word of God is there, and they have made a hold on it, and they're blessed, and they're happy, and they want to sing the word, say amen, praise God, let me sing one. Amen. amen. Ain't something good, but I got some of my heart in the house, and I want to let it out. Praise God, get some space here, well. Amen. Praise God. And you don't have to go with this thousand dollars for you. Entertain them to keep them in the midst. Amen. If you have to entertain them to keep them here, you might as well let them go. They have nothing in the house. Amen. Amen. Nothing in the house. Amen. Praise Amen. God. The word of God is exciting enough. It's strong enough. It's mighty enough. Thank God the promises are good enough that we all be kept by it. If our attitude is to the degree where we can absorb the word of God and let it work in our life. Blessed is a man. Praise God. Blessed. We're looking for uh, the blessings of God this morning. They have to turn loose the ways of the world and take hold of the ways of God. Amen. Another blessing is a man. Thank God. We don't have to assemble ourselves. The word said, for Satan, after sending them uh, yourselves together as a man or some is. That's just as much the word of God is. That's the blessing of the real God. Amen. It's required that we support the word with our presence. And that's the most important thing you can support the word with. Your presence and your cooperation. The other things will come automatic if we will support the word of God, thank God, by obeying it. For the way of a transgressor is hard. For the ungodly are not so, but are like a chaff as the wind drives away. Amen. You want to buy some day, but thank God, are driven away. I was just uh, thinking, even down home, if everyone had come to the altar, and we believe God saved them, if he said, I'm leaving God, I don't think I think it's not, but at least someone, God gave someone, but they ought to testify to it, and God blessed them. But they didn't last. Some of them didn't last. Some last today, some you never seen them yet. But really, they got helped them, but when they got out there, the word of God reflected on what they had given up, and besides, they moved in the love of God like they loved, they got the world. Because they didn't come back and get established and get help, you never saw them anymore. Amen. Amen. But when they, God seen you with the gentleman bar, he got to require us uh, about a life. Yeah. They just didn't need help. That's possible. He said, if they got something, they stayed saved. Oh, God, God gave them something. Sure, he saved them. According to the prayer, well, he saved them. Just because they come, don't come back, don't mean God didn't do anything for them. Right. They didn't do what they were supposed to do. Right. They, they didn't go on like they should have. They didn't get right. sent down and let the word they got to get some depth down in their heart. And so if they had gotten it, they wouldn't have been the same as Stephen. Right. Did he say he'd come along and stole it from where? Out of the heart. As for God put it, he don't want to put it in your mouth or leave it in your ear. He put it right down in your heart where it can go if you let it. But because they didn't defend it, they didn't stand for it, they didn't let it sink down. It was stolen and it went out and it actually just with it up and was gone. And no death. And no death. So Lord help us. We want to be blessed. We want to be encouraged and thankful God. Amen. Grace the transgress is hard, but thank God those that love his law, that great grace have they that love his law, and nothing shall offend them. We're saying if we're walking in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Saints, we need fellowship one with another. In these last days, it's encouraging. We need fellowship one with another. But thank God he says that fellowship is conditioned upon our fellowship with the Father. 
We don't need to fellowship with anybody that's not fellowship with God. Amen. It's not a problem. That's right. Amen. Anyone who won't fellowship the Word of God, thank God that fellowship is worth it. It is not much count. They got religion, not salvation. Thank God for our fellowship with the Father is our depends upon our attitude towards His Word. <laughs> Blessed are the undefiled in the way. If we'll walk in the way, and that's the instruction of His Word, then we'll be in fellowship with one with another because we'll be walking with God. How's our fellowship this morning? Amen. They make in me appropriate to ourselves the blessings of the kingdom. You know, it's a difficult thing, and it seems a bit, uh, shall we say, unequal for us to have to take the persecutions and the hard things of salvation and not get the joy out of it. And that's why many people, they hang around for the hard things, but they never dare to dig down to get the best of them. Bless them are the poor in spirit. How's your attitude? Are you rough and tough and hard to have? Or are you free? Are you born in spirit this morning? Well, yours is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn. I mean, what is it that grieves you? I mean, when people uh, are in, living in sin and call themselves Christians, you should be warned into that. That's difficult to see our loved ones that just won't give their heart to God. We talk with them and we deal with them. We're talking about mourning concerning the kingdom. Blessed are they mourn, for they shall be comforted. God's going to wipe away all tears. As far as the old previous condition we were, yes. thank God you're down in Babylon, you already have taken care of those tears. So there's tears of mourning about those who love the world and say that they love God. Blessed are they, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger after righteousness and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful. It's an attribute of the saints. Be merciful. Amen. Amen. For they shall obtain mercy. None of us ever get to the place where we're not going to depend upon the mercy of God. That's right. When we come to the judgment of God, God, and we've done all we know to do, He said, you're getting a prophet to serve. Amen. And God will need the mercy of God and His grace to take us across. Nobody's going to have any extra righteousness and God will squander in this life. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. Amen. How's your heart this morning? Amen. And how's your attitude toward God? Blessed are the peacemakers. Are you strong maker? Are you a tough maker? Thank God are you going to call this court among the brethren. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called Amen. the children of God. Amen. Blessed are you when men shall revile you. But what happens if we don't get the word of God? When men revile us, he said, because of persecution. Many are offended. But he said, they remind you for a living right, blessed are you, which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Lord knows. We'll look here to the Revelation letter for this lesson. As we were reading these that were enumerated, we realized that there are many others of the lesson. If you do those things, blessed shall you be when you come in. Thank God, blessed shall you be when you go out. Thank God, blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the in the in the country, wherever you in the farmlands. Thank God, blessed shall you be on all your deeds. He will do what God wants to do. But if we won't do it, He said, blessed shall be your pastors. Amen. If we won't do it, He said, cursed shall you be in the city. Thank God, cursed you gonna be in the country. Amen. Cursed shall be. Thank God, your basket and all the things that you do. But God is calling 